News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. It's good to have you here on this Thursday and a good show on tap this morning. As always, we're going to invite you to join in the conversation if you'd like. We're going to be streaming live on the Plus and also on Facebook at newschannel5.com if you want to jump on there and I'll be following that as well. A good show on tap today uh, with regard to a couple of elements. Um, later in the show, um, our second guest will be a regular that we've been having on again and uh, she's helped an awful lot of you. Dr. Friday Burke will be joining us again as we continue to get requests and questions about the stimulus in the payments there and unemployment and taxes and how this all plays out. If you have a question or concern about maybe you haven't received your stimulus payment or what you can do to investigate that, Dr. Burke will be on in the second portion of the show. But the first half of the show, or the first segment anyway, will be uh, taking a look at the Nashville reopening and in general the state reopening and a big part of that for many of us is going back to restaurants and restaurants and the service industry reopening and someone who's very attached to all of that because if you ask me I think he's one of the uh, pioneers of the culinary industry in this city if not the country Tom Tom Morales joins us from Tomcats good morning to you Tom it's nice to see you yeah I'd have to bow to Randy Ray but Randy no, Ray sure. Uh, a few other oh, there's some I, others. I'm not saying you're the only one. Randy Rayburn <laughs> certainly among them. But I mean, I you know, you grew up in in Madison, right? In this area, um, uh, family of uh, what? Ten? How many siblings did you have? Nine brothers and sisters. So I got ten kids, and I told you we learned to cook at an early age. Yeah. <laughs> My dad used to get out on the grill, get your mother out of the kitchen. So that was kind of the. The, the ticket to learning and uh, I paid attention. I tell young people all the time, pay attention. It might mean a little bit more responsibility, but you learn a lot more that way. Oh, absolutely. I was the same way. I'll tell you, you know what, if I didn't go into TV news, I would have loved to have become a chef. And you know, just knowing your background and the life you've led, uh, it's to me fascinating and wonderful around food. And so with you having been here in Madison and, and all that you've done from your career at the beginning with catering to some of the many fantastic restaurants you have and the way you're very I think attached to this community I want your take I mean as things are reopening and we'll get the nuts and bolts of how you think it's gone so far with this first week in Nashville and outside the area as well in Williamson County and others but do you believe Tom and you've seen things change over the years as we come out of this and we are eventually going to come out full-fledged whenever that is as this virus finally dies away but I mean has the restaurant industry in your mind because of what we've dealt with now permanently changed or do you think it'll get back to pretty much the way it was that's a tough question uh outside of cure or uh, a vaccine i don't think it will ever get back to where it once was uh, the the reality that we have right now is uh, you know lower broad for us is is the beach it's like mm -hmm. if you go to destin Florida, you're going for the beach right. and the beach is there uh, for lower broad, it's the music is the beach, and so you know until we have music back and people can gather and feel comfortable, uh, I think the trauma of what we're going through is going to keep people away. Uh, you know, can you eighty something, eighty five percent of people don't want to get on an airplane. Eighty something other percent do not want to uh, do a mass gathering, whether it's a sporting event or a music concert. And uh, so, so all those things play in, and I think until you alleviate the fear, uh, there's real no purpose in opening, especially on Lower Broad. The, the neighborhood restaurants are, are going to be eight months ahead of us in terms of of uh, getting back to normal or the new normal. And you know, some of them, some of us are just going to rush back in like nothing's ever happened. And and, and that's the fear I have as a business owner is that we're going to have a, a you know a spike in cases and they're going to close everything down again. And once we go through the expense of opening, which is a, a major expense, the th thing about the hospitality industry is that we are trained to operate in a clean way. I mean, we have health inspections and, and they'll come in at the most inopportune times. And like right now on the Southern on the wall, I have a 100, which is unheard of uh, from our last health inspection. So I think internally it's doable to, to change habits, to, to figure out the touch points and, and, and to operate in a sanitized way without appearing to be a hospital. 
but I think where we fear and you know right now there's a political divide even within the industry you know 47 percent of the restaurants did not open in Texas 43 percent did and, and, and it kind of is a, a red blue thing and it, but what what we all agree on is that that we can uh, operate safely however our biggest variable in that is our customer yeah and so if a customer comes in and he doesn't want to wear a mask or you know and we're thinking well they wear a mask to their table and then their table is socially distanced they take the mask off of course they can eat food and we can have the hospitality that we we're used to and there's going to be different ways to create that hospitality i think uh we're we're gonna do it creatively but anyway my bigger point is is that if they do not want to follow the rules then not only are they putting our other customers in jeopardy they're putting our internal customer which is our employee in jeopardy so that's the biggest fear and and then if we reopen and there's a spike then you're essentially whatever we we've estimated it's gonna cost us two hundred thousand dollars per entity to open by the mm-hmm. time you recruit re- uh buy the food that we had to sure. give away or you know the perishable stuff and and pay bills so people will start delivering to us again (laughs) (laughs) so you know it's 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 a it's a it's a balancing act and you know i'm i'm glad that some people are open and i can watch and see and pay attention and and see how it happens if there is no spike and good and and people will uh, say hey the science is wrong and if if there is a spike they're going to say oh the science is right we need to slow down and get this right so that's kind of the conundrum we're in right and so in a nutshell though as far as what you're telling your properties it's wait and see for now for you then oh absolutely i mean i i I threw franklin the other day last week when they really opened up and you know going to leaper's fork it looked like a parade nobody had mask on right you know certain businesses that were open they were jam-packed and not even the employees were wearing mask and it was like what are you doing people you know and and, and what what it is you know the kenny chesney or one of them had a song no shirts no shoes no service yeah. you know and it, you know i grew out of destin restaurants and you, you walked in without a shirt on you couldn't get service you walked in without shoes on you couldn't get in and 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 i think that's that has to be the new normal with mask i mean i'm not sure that that's as save all of all but but it, it is something that we, we do it not for ourselves we're doing it for you and so to me when people are arrogant about that i mean you know what what's the big deal you know i mean just it's not for you it's for your neighbor and I, and i think that's really what's missing Thing. And, and that's something the hospitality industry can lead is, is a unity you know the, the this great divide that's right now in in our country somebody needs to bridge it and it it can't be through more divisiveness and you know i've talked to a friend of mine i was in home depot i guess i can say that and said, why you got the mask on i said look to protect you right exactly. <laughs> you, know, cause it, you know it's like there's some bravado and in it and, and it really takes more courage to put one on i think so i, I don't know there's going to be some really good messaging that's in, in in acceptance i think before we come out of this and there needs to be and there needs to be a, the leadership needs to be bridging that gap rather than you know expanding it preach i agree and it's interesting to hear from someone like you who is a business owner that's recognizing this but you're putting safety first and you're going to wait until you're sure it's safe before you get things back open we have some phone calls for you tom if you don't mind i'm going to grab one from robin here with a question perhaps along the uh, the food industry robin do you have a question for tom morales uh yes i was concerned about um the seating arrangements inside restaurants Mm -hmm. we've been like everybody else in for a couple of months and now they're reopening but is it safe to go in a restaurant to sit down it's hard to keep the mask on when you're eating and drinking Uh, she makes some great points i i've had several people just on facebook even messaging tom how yeah the idea of wearing a mask which you know a lot of people would certainly want to do but it's interesting you go into a restaurant and you got your mask on well you have to take it down put a spoonful of food in put the mask back on and then the question of seating the seating and is it every other table i mean how does that work especially when you have a crowd that's the key is is distancing within the restaurant Mm -hmm. so you can relax the mask 
But, you know, we're putting HEPA filters in all our air conditioning ducts. I mean, there's so many ways this thing can spread. I mean, essentially, people have to feel relaxed about going out in the public. Because, I mean, I watch people in the Home Depots. I mean, they're limiting people, but they're, you know, they they don't, they violate your space all the time. I mean, if, if somebody wants to look at, you know, a, a screen door, they're, they're going to get right next to you. And then that's the fear we have in a restaurant is if somebody wants to get up to the bar and, and they're just going to butt their way up to it. So we're looking at putting bar seating as reserved seating. Unless you have a seat, you can't come into the general part of the restaurant. Uh, every touch point we are reimagining so that the customer is safe. And now, what that does for somebody who is in the hospitality business, it makes us almost the hospitality police. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the nature. We don't want to have to say, hey, buddy, you know, you're in somebody else's space, kind of back off. So what we're we're planning is clear signage and clear information before you even come into the restaurant with the expected behavior. I've gone to fine restaurants in New York City and they say, "Hey, this is you got to wear a shirt and tie, a coat and tie." And I said, well, "I don't have one. I've traveled up here. I don't have one." Well, they'll lead you over to a room and they'll fit you in a tie and give you a jacket. It may not fit you, and you get to go in and eat whatever the steak. It's usually steakhouses, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. The point is, is that there's going to have to be a new uh, understanding and behavior, the decor of what, how you conduct yourself in public. I think, I think that has to. That's the great divide right now. Is we have to figure out a way to come together and understand that this, we're all in this together. Whether you believe it, whether it's a hoax, whether you know the latest conspiracy theory, it doesn't matter. You know, right now we feel like you know we're just trying to put out the fire and we're looking for the fire hoses to do it with. And right now we're not getting any real clear leadership. I mean, we're, we're the federal government won't even, you know, they want to be able to play the blame game and, and, and the, the, the relief that's come to main street is not the same relief that went to wall street. And until wall street feels the pain, uh, there's not going to be any, you know, what, this is what we're staring at right now. We're staring at, uh, a corporate takeover of Main Street. Think about it. Uh, you know, I, Acme may not be open under this ownership, but somebody's going to come in that's got a pile of money and it's going to be Acme, but it's not going to be the Acme that they mm -hmm. know and love. So, so I mean, they're, they're, you know, you look at factory farms, what's happening right there right now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're being you know they require a workspace that's not safe uh when you can go and buy we buy from bear creek farms right here in middle tennessee get all our beef and you know and, it, and it's a safe environment so i think there's going to be a switch over to local sustainable it's been happening but you know, there's also the volume i mean there there really needs to be a contract with farmers so that you're taking the risk out of them growing what you need mm -hmm. as a restaurant because you know let's say when tomatoes are ripe well every farm's got tomatoes and and you can make tomato soup and you can make you know salsa and you can do a thousand forest gump tomatoes but you you at some point there's too many so they have to really construct the, their growth to what you need hey i need butternut squash i need leaf lettuce i need this i need that and grow the amount that the restaurant needs and then in return the restaurant needs to say hey I'll guarantee your crop if, if it's a drought and you don't produce as much as hmm. produce. I, I, I'm, I'm, we used to do it in the fish business down in Destin. I used to go, and in the summer when everybody's out fishing, you know, the price of amberjack, the price of creeper would go way down, and anybody could buy it at a cheap price. But in the winter when the storms were around and not everybody was out fishing and the prices went up so what we did with the fishermen so that we had a fresh supply year-round is we would say okay instead of two dollars a pound in the summer and four dollars a pound in the winter we're going to pay you three dollars a pound year-round okay makes guess sense. we're all okay it came to us because we were willing to treat treat them as a a, a sustainable source of of what we needed Really quick, uh, one other question that I've seen some folks asking on uh, social media, just along the lines of, you've talked about what might happen in the restaurants when they open in terms of where the customers are. Aside from, I assume, wearing masks and, and gloves, I guess, are there any other changes happening back in the kitchen that you would want to see with what's going on? Is there anything more beyond that in terms of food preparation? 
Yeah, there. We're designing new menus right now that uh, basically eliminate the need for twelve people in the kitchen. Hmm. So, just being able to social distance your your sauté cook from <laughs> from your grill cook to your fry cook. You know, you you know if you if you, you can do that through menu engineering by figuring out all your prep and and then prep for us is done in a separate location so we can socially distance there we're having different entrances so the workers come in a different ent- ent- entrance and you know is checking their temperature we're going to do that but that's like you're asymptomatic it doesn't really matter you, we're going to require or ask uh we're still trying to find out the legal thing there mm-hmm. of whether we bring everybody back we can test them even though again a test is just as good as the day you took it i think the antibody test is is going to be a critical because i think the virus was around a long time before the first case showed up uh you know just anecdotally i mean, it's not science i just heard and saw different people I and mean, my my son was sick for a month and had flu test and had all the symptoms but he couldn't they couldn't diagnose it and they thought it was mono so i, I think there's things that we're going to discover as we move along and and the transmission of it is really uh that's the scary part yeah. i mean it, you don't right now we don't know and and so people until until there's science and not I, you know I'm, I'm tired of the politics of it i mean i i get i get, I get phone calls and people start oh you know this is a hoax there's not a, i said well then go to new york city and work in a ER unit and tell me it's a hoax, you know, or, or go ahead, you can go to Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. you know. But, you know, you know, the, 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 this whole, I, I am wanting strategic leadership. I am wanting uh, the science to rule. I am wanting my customer to be safe. I want to be able to laugh with a group of people. You spoke about the music industry and the hospitality industry are joined by the hip. They're both very creative industries. My lead chef and my company is a hell of a great songwriter, Matt Farley. He's mm-hmm. he sings, he plays drums, he plays guitar. His kids are one, and you know he keeps the beat in the kitchen, and it's never you know it's never off tune. And when you consider Southern sixteen hundred people a day, yeah, we we and and, and and you know we get maybe one two complaints out of that. It and generally it's something that's minor, but the the uh, Acme we did six hundred and sixty two thousand meals there last year. Yeah. And, and so and you think about that volume. Well, I've, you know, you think about you're right. And I've never been there, Tom, when it has not been packed and in the crowd. And that's part of the allure. It's a big darn party. And that can't come back at this point, at least in your mind, not yet. And uh, that'll be your call to make. Listen, we have to go. But I, I really appreciate you joining us today and uh, give us an update, your thoughts. It's interesting to get it from a perspective of a businessman like yourself, who has a lot at stake here. And so do your employees. So if, if you'd like, uh, we'd love to have you on uh, down the road as we see this move forward if that's okay yeah well i think next week we'll have a pretty clear Good. answer i mean so let me know yeah we will thank you again it's tom morales with tom Katz, and uh, you know uh, a key figure in uh, the the restaurant industry and and a community member here who cares okay you may agree or disagree with some of what he says but there's no disputing the fact that he cares and i think we all want the same thing is to get back to living our lives the key is doing so as safely as you can and and that's something he's monitoring with his businesses as he moves forward listen we're going to take a break when we come back uh, i already see a lot of more questions and they're just not tailing off and I'm, i hate that because that means people are still waiting for their money, be it through unemployment or the stimulus. Dr. Friday Burke's going to join us. We're going to try to sift through some more of your questions with regard to perhaps why you are one of the millions who still are waiting for some of this badly needed money. You can join us on Facebook at newschannel5.com or give us a call here on The Plus. We'll be back with more right after this.